Tazi. Today we're going to take a look at um, a kata called Tensho. It comes from the Goju Ru style of karate. Uh, very Okinawan, and, and it was developed, this form was developed uh, by, by Miyagi Sensei uh, to uh, juxtapose and help the Sanchin practice. Now, the Sanchin practice was a totally tight, rigorous, uh, strengthening body exercise. Now the Tencho is supposed to be done relaxed, both with breathing patterns that are slightly different in their application. Now the Tencho um, is, was developed from a form called Rokushu, which means six hands, or we can relate it in Kyusho as the six G hands from the Bubishi. Now the Bubishi was, that is being used and widely circulated now, is um, from a Goju text. So let's take those hands, put it in context with Goju Karate, and then put it in with Tensho or the Rokushu form. Now, I'm not going to do the whole form for you. I'm just going to work with the hand position so you can see more in detail what I'm trying to um, relate to you. The Tensho, the hand positions that they use today, have been muted from the 6G hands, but they're very, very similar, so only slight altercations have been made. Were they made on purpose, or did time and teaching just water it down naturally by showing movement, not really explaining the correct posture to the students, so they just mimic the general actions? We'll never know, okay? But um, I'm going to take a, give you an example here. Okay, the hand position comes out to what's called the iron claw. Now in the bibishi, um, that that's the, the name of the, the hand position. It's also the name used in the um, tensho form. Okay, the hand comes then back. Now that's just a palm action or just a shifting action that's used to deflect in an arm position, like in a, a blocking method. Okay, um, but we could have used that as a um, iron sword, and I'll show you the differences in a second. The hand then comes up, rising up and then it drops down, extends the palm, it rises up, it drops down, shifts to the side, and comes back in. Now that's the Tensho form. And they do it with both hands as well, coming out, coming back, rising up, dropping down, pressing, rising up, dropping, extending out, and coming back in. Now that is the, the hand positions or the hand postures that are used in the Tensho form. But if we take it and adapt them to the six G hands instead, you still have the same form exactly with just minor altercations to the hand. So instead of being just an exercise of breathing, it turns into a very um, applicable martial application with the hands transitioning so you get those rotational actions. You need to develop these hands and to uh, use the Q-show with these hand strikes. So let's take a look at that posture again. I'll only do it one-handed. Okay, you're coming across as the iron claw. Now the iron claw looks the same and it can have the same applications. Now when you come in, if you extend the wrist bone for the iron sword, you have a much more viable weapon. Right? You're going to extend up. Now instead of extending with the finger out to the side, okay, which is a weakened hand position, if you tucked it in for the iron bone, you have a rising iron bone that would be very uh, uh, interesting and uh, have great potential in the Q show. You're going to pull back. Now they just extend the palm, but if you extended it into the iron palm, that has even more ramifications as an internal body strike as opposed to an external body push or body strike. And we explain this later in another post or another blog that I'm doing on the last hand, uh, the iron palm, the most sophisticated of the Kyusho weapons. Now in the Tensho, they rise up and you can see that there's a very a strong emphasis on the wrist. But if they just instead change it to the blood pool hand and put the emphasis on the knuckles, we have a whole different type of a striking action. Okay, so as they rise up now, they drop down. You have the iron sword hand as opposed to just a palm dropping down or arm moving downward. You have the potential of this bone right here. Okay, so that's a very significant change, okay, in your application. Now from there, they're going to pull it across and bring it across again. Now when they pu push it across as this hand position, the Tensho, they do it with the wrist instead of the knuckles. Okay, so again, there's that blood pool application. And then they pull back as a palming action. But what's the slight difference that I see is you can use that as a grabbing, tearing action with the single blade of grass hand. 
all right? So these type of actions are what's muted in the, in the form. And also the, at the end, when they're bringing the hands up and turning the palms over, you can do the iron sword here or the iron sword outward. Okay, so there's many different um, fighting applications in the G hands that are in the Tencho, but just mildly stripped so, out. Let's take a, a look at the form. First of all, the hand comes around. Okay, it's, this is the iron claw hand. Okay, it comes back as the iron sword. Okay, it rises as the iron bone. It pulls back and then it extends as iron palm. It then turns up and into uh, the blood pool hand. It drops into the iron sword. It takes a swing out to the side as the blood pool hand once again. And then it comes back in as the single blade of brass hand. So that's the six hands. Now, that's a little bit on Tencho, and I hope you uh, can gain some worth out of this. I don't mean to uh, uh, ask you to change your forms, because your instructors might not like that. But again, realize that the potential may have been stripped out of this Tencho form. And it's a very uh, good possibility you can get much more potential out of this if you practice the 6G hands, as opposed to not.